As a player on the school's hockey team, I am glad that the team's miraculous state championship run was able to shine a light on a very dark moment in our community. However, it can never fill the void left by the loss of our friends, classmates, and educators. We are out here today with the rest of the country. <laughs> to put an end to gun violence. We need to stop favoring guns over our lives. I and the rest of the MSD students truly appreciate you all being here today and the support that you have given us. I was there the day of the shooting. I lived through it and I lost four of my close friends. February 14th is supposed to be a day of love and appreciation for those around you. But now for me it is a day that I'll never forget. Because that day four of my friends and 13 others of my schoolmates, teachers, and administrators were viciously shot and killed in our school. I was so lucky not to be in that building, but my friends had to sit in a classroom and watch all of our friends be murdered in front of them. My friend had to hold her friend's hand as she passed away. When this tragedy began, I wasn't in the building where everything occurred, but I was way too close to it. I was outside of it when the fire alarm went off. Thanks to Coach Vice, who sacrificed his life protecting me and my classmates, and my teacher, I was directed back into my class. Twenty other students and I, plus our teacher, squeezed into a tight closet for two hours. When the SWAT team finally came to save us, we had to run a specific route in order to avoid any possible dead bodies or injured kids. I finally made it home, and that's when everything became a blur and I couldn't think straight. I don't remember the end of that night or a few days after. Each day kept getting harder and harder instead of easier and easier. The nightmares and the crying and the anger would not stop. And because of this tragedy, I don't see the world the same anymore. I see when I, I see the evil when I look at people rather than the goodness that I know everyone is full of. And when I see the police officers out of school, I only see the giant gun strapped across them. Just the day before the atrocity that took place at my school, I was in biology sitting next to Gina, helping her pick her classes for sophomore year. And now she's gone and she won't get to finish high school or take those classes and I still can't believe she's gone forever. She was in two of my classes and now I have to sit there and look at her empty desk sitting next to me wishing she was still there. What do you say to your kids after an incident like that? How can you ever tell them that everything will be okay again? There's no handbook, no manual to guide them through this. The fact that I have to feel this way, and we all do at the only at the age of 14, seems unreal to me. I'm marching for my friends because they can't anymore. I'm speaking out for them because they don't have a voice anymore, and we won't stop until a change is made in their names. Thank you. have not died in school shootings. Why are 96 people in this country dying every day from gun violence? And why in the United States are black men 13 times more likely to be shot than white men? University, there was a study and they wanted to answer a simple question how many times are guns at home used in self-defense versus the number of times these weapons are involved in an unintentional injury suicide attempt and criminal assault or homicide 
It will be no surprise to hear that for every time a gun was used in a home for a legally justifiable shooting, there were four unintentional shootings, seven criminal assaults or homicides, and 11 attempted or completed suicides. So if you are a gun owner and are telling yourself that you are safer with a gun in your home, you are lying to yourself. I was in kindergarten and the first time I learned what a school shooting was. I started learning boxing. When I was eight years old, my brother taught me how to tackle and disarm a school shooter. I was 11 when my brother taught me how to manually disarm somebody holding a rifle or a shotgun to me in a hostage situation. That was the same year someone threatened to shoot up the school he was attending. They posted a picture on Facebook of them holding a gun with the caption, don't come to school on Monday. It was just before seventh grade that I learned how to paint myself with my classmates' blood and throw them over me in order to play dead in the classroom. It was this week when a student came to school with a gun that was scarily close to my own. I'm 15. I shouldn't have to spend a decade preparing myself to get gunned down in a school. I should be getting slushies with my friends at the gas station. My biggest worry should be that the girl I have a crush on doesn't like me back. Since the year 2000, there have been 270 and counting school shootings. That is approximately 15 per year. And since 2015, the number of school shootings have averaged about one per week. We used to wonder if another school shooting was going to happen soon. Now, we can fairly wonder where and when. On the day of the national walkout, we helped to organize a very special 17 minutes at our school. It was a chance to be heard while remaining silent. And we took it further. We took it to the media, in print and on the air. We took our message to the Congressional Representative's office, declaring to be heard and reminding him that the next generation of our voters is just around the corner. I have been organizing groups of students who are working to get common sense gun legislation passed in Minnesota. We students have met with legislators on both sides of the aisle and demanded that these bills be allowed a hearing. Yet Majority Leader Gazelka, Speaker Doubt, Chairman Limmer, and Chairman Johnson refused to even hear them in committee. We aren't waiting for the adults to fix the problems. We are fighting for the next generation. And I want to be in the last generation that is living with the threat of mass school shootings. We should not be arming teachers. Instead, we should be working on longer and more thorough background checks. We should raise the age of buying a gun to 21 everywhere. And no one with any mental disability anywhere should ever be able to buy a gun. School resource officers are in our schools that are armed with guns that have proven to just harass children instead of actually helping them. And we want to see them gone. No guns should be in our schools. We are calling for an honest examination of the way guns are purchased, the types of guns that are available, the rules governing where guns are allowed, and a culture that right now places the rights of a few over the safety of us all. that you develop here and take it back to your schools on Monday. Talk to your friends and gather a group of people together who care about the issue. Follow local and national activist groups on social media to find out about up upcoming events for a variety of issues related to gun violence prevention. 
with peers talk about a plan of action. Never again will we have our friends labeled lost when we know where they actually are. Never again will any child have to fear for their lives in school. Never again should anyone have to attend 17 funerals in one week. Rest in peace, Squawk. I love you, homie. We are lifting our voices up until they are so loud and so powerful that they drown out the sound of gunshots. We are lifting our voices up until the only sound that will be heard is the sound of change. Thank you. Those 17 people will never walk this earth again. I will never see my friends again. We now speak for those 17 angels and we need to make a difference in this world. This is our country, we are the future, and no one is stopping us now. Thank you.